It's time once again for the Real People Multi Game Solitaire Mega Tournament. Before we begin, I think it's very important that I show you how organized I've gotten and why it is, because this might be a tip that could help all of you in your lives if you have a disorganized abode and you wish to organize it. And that tip is change one thing. And what I changed was I found the Real People container. Um, which is great for a couple of reasons. I think I talked about this in the last video probably at great length. I think it was at great length. That was a while ago though. Um, one reason is I now have all the real people, I assume. Um, another is this is a great organizer for real people cards. You wouldn't have thought about it, but um, I did. Uh, I didn't uh, immediately, but it eventually came to me. Uh, so, I, you know, I have different piles of real people cards based on where they are in the tournament. That's kind of how I've been stowing it. I just put them in different places. I don't really have a good system. And that leads to disorganized lifestyle. Um, so now I have different piles here. Um, like I have our champions here. And I have the people who are kind of somewhere in the middle pile here. And then I have the people who are in the loser's bracket here and here. And I could even put more people here, but I don't. Um, and here I've even like organized them by gender for Crusoe's Planet. Because sometimes I, I, I don't want to play with a bunch of dudes. Um, so I, uh, I draw randomly from the, the female pile of the loser's bracket. And draw randomly from the male pile to try to get a good mixture. Because then I can get uh, a closer a closer divide, closer to um, our actual world. You know, we, we, we generally have about equal number of females and males. In fact, a little more females. So I did that and that led to this magical, look at all how organized that is. Compared to what it was earlier, you can look at back at my tour of my room video to see, wow, look how much more, oh my gosh, that is a lot better. Everything, the floor is cleaner. This is all more organized. That is exactly where that glove goes upright. It was just laying down somewhere. Uh, I put the giraffe girl with the dreads and I put a little camel behind them. Very good. So if you find that your room is really disorganized, do something small like that. And that small change just may be like a pedal a petal in a pond that ripples outwards into ripples of organized circles. Um, while we're looking at the map here, I wanted to just talk about um, a few a few kind of rulesy, overarchy things that I've decided. One, Pegasus, how's she going to enter the tournament? Well, there's not a very good way right now because everyone has all the empire, all the counter sets are being used, and if I it's just kind of too unfair to let her horn in on someone else's. So what we're going to do is when someone is eliminated here, which I believe is going to be flush, possibly this turn, we'll see, um, we'll just have Pegasus jump in and then at the next elimination it'll be two people eliminated. So I think we'll do here. Now we could also do an elimination here and elimination here, but that just doesn't feel like enough time. Could do an elimination here. Yeah, I'm just going to do that. Um, so here Pegasus will be able to come in with the counter sets of whoever lost Ooh, look. horse and buggy. And then um, the other thing, there's been some questions about what happens when we get to here, because we're going to have two people left. It's not going to be an elimination based on points at that point. At that point, we're no longer going to be using the progress track, not going to keep track of it. Um, well, I guess it's important if someone's not, yeah, we'll keep if someone's still moving up the progress track, we'll keep doing that. But we'll be down to two people at that point, and then it's just going to be last person standing. So that means they're going to have to eliminate, and I can tell I'm making the game really long uh, by doing this, but that's kind of what I'm doing with this game. Um, it's going to be last person standing. So that means they're going to have to eliminate their leaders and their empires and everything. Um, and we're just going to get really bloody in the aftermath of the world. So Cowboys are starter in a turn where there was no starting of empires. Runt was the only one who could, um, but she opted not to, perhaps because she didn't like what she had, and she really can afford to just wait to find the um, right empire for her. She is so far ahead of everyone else, which is right under here, 
equal, like a, a hundred points more than Flush, who's the last player, that you know, she she doesn't really need to hurry to get a new person. Um, big production by Cowboy. He used both militia and heavy taxes to really bump up his um, unit production. That that made it so he doubled production at the cost of disordering his capital here, England. Um, and he also didn't have to pay his people for some reason uh, because I guess they're passionate. Maybe they're a militia, so they're, they're passionate about uh, working for cowboy. And who wouldn't be? Just doing production for giraffe, and I made, I made a huge mistake. Uh, I've been I've been scoring a bunch of points for this wheat for her. Um, she's not in the fifth age. Someone's in the fifth age, but giraffe's not in the fifth age. She's in the fourth age. What threw me off is this five here, and it, it wasn't the thing, you know, a case where I was actually thinking. I was just juggling too many balls, and I dropped one, uh, probably because I was tired and trying to finish this game because I'm going to be moving to a different house so I have to finish the game. I don't want to take this down and set it back up again. Um, though I could. I will if that's what it takes but I would rather that not be what it takes. Anyway, so I've been giving, I've been scoring her a bunch of points that she didn't deserve. I'm not going to take those off because like I said, if I make a mistake I'm just going to play it. And I've done that so many times in this game with so many people that I hope they have all had some benefit. If not, then it's just the wiles of the world that has damaged them. Um, so this, so she's been scoring a lot. She's not going to be scoring a lot this turn because she's not scoring those wheats. Uh, she's producing right now, and there's no way that's going to make her go up to here to the fifth age. No way. Going right from a fairly large production phase, past trade in progress because no one did it to maneuver. There's uh, People are feeling fighty. People are frisky. There's a lot of maneuvering. There's going to be a lot of fighting. And we also saw a lot of building up. So it's, a, it's, a, it's definitely a, going to be a turn, looks like, right now, just from the production phase and seeing the maneuver chits that are sticking up. It's going to be a turn of build up of defense, military defense and attack. So we're starting this off since it's Cowboy's turn to start um, with the Phoenicians counterattack against the Ottomans who attacked last time. They just kind of popped up and took a big chunk of the Phoenician Empire, which is a very old and learned empire. So it was sad to see um, some of that knowledge get burned away. Or we could look at it as a happy thing because it got disseminated to some young blood here in the Ottomans. Um, but there, Cowboy's not having that, so he's going to strike back. Three big battles here, um, one in Mesopotamia, one in Blurg, Blurk, and one in Syria. I think that's a Syria, yeah. All right, so this one over here is going to be kind of straight up mano y mano. Um, Cowboy has the advantage in that he can play cards. Disadvantage only, he only has one card that he can play. Um, whereas Milky, his, he actually has a scientific advantage with the Ottomans right now uh, over the Babylonians, so that should be interesting. So we got this kind of straight up battle. Um, this battle here, where we have, it looks like it's going to be 10, um, 12, because the fort plus three, so it's going to be 15 for Melky because um, Cowboy doesn't have any sort of catapults or cannons or anything that he's sending into this battle. To um, six, 11, 15, so it's uh, uh, 16 because he's sending in Blackbeard, and Blackbeard is an artist, so he's not going to have any other military benefits. So pretty, pretty close battle there too. This one's also fairly close. This is going to be 11 to... 12 um, right there and that's without figuring in any of the science advantages so we'll see how that all turns out it ended up two out of three not bad for cowboy he played an outflanked card here to win this one uh, blackbeard was enough to get it done here he used some some artistic die rolling so to speak um, but this one he got stopped by this this gentleman in the cap um, so our next battle here is going to be between the Sudanese, or, no, yeah, the Sudanese versus the Pharaonic Egyptians. Um, so giraffe Sudanese are sweeping eastward into Kenya and into Tanzania. Now these fights are, are 
harder than they look for giraffe to win. Partially, well mostly because the Pharaonic Egyptians have both um, a military shield advantage, which means runt can play cards, and also they have a scientific advantage, which means um, runt gets a flat bonus. So this fellow here, he gets a plus three, so he's actually four. He's a four guy. and they have seven, so it's four against seven. And then if she can play any cards on top of that, that's good uh, for runt, but not good for giraffe. So this fellow here, he's at four, but then he gets plus three for being in the mountains, and that gives him a seven. So that's a seven to seven right there. So that's like an even matchup, even though these units look much stronger. Skewer punked. It was, it was um, seven to seven here. But the skewer punked doubled this guy's value, making it eight to seven, and that was enough to really turn the tide. Run won a huge victory here, got rid of both of her guys, and took some money from Giraffe. Um, the Sudanese did get Kenya, however, and it's it's a nice place for profits, which which is great for the Sudanese because they really need um, somewhere which they can build and get some money if they want to continue this assault on the Pharaonic Egyptians. Uh, Giraffe wanted this one because she wanted to take control of this artifact. One of the things the Pharaonic Egyptians score on is having artifacts, so if she can uh, remove Runt's artifact dominance, which a lot of her artifacts are here in this like relatively unprotected midlands, then she might have a chance of overcoming her. Now, like I said at the beginning, uh, in points, I mean, like I said in the beginning, she doesn't really need to beat her in points, but if she's, you know, up by runt, um, there's less of a chance that she's going to be the one to go down. That's what she figures anyway. Let's see. Is runt going to maneuver? Yes, papal states. So we're going to see kind of a, a counterattack between the same two two actors here, Runt and Giraffe, just with a different empire. So now the Papal States are attacking the Romans, and that's kind of fun. Giraffe bought herself some time. She used treachery, which made it so the Papal States couldn't even attack. They just had to go back. Um, Runt likes that card, so she's going to use this card that she has, the Vizier, to try and pick it up. However, Giraffe does not want her to pick it up, so she is going to use Bad Augury, which cancels that card right there. Rapid card play. Some interesting goings on in Runt's Pharaonic Egyptian civilized face. Um, first thing they try to do is they try to send some of the the Romans to the New World. <laughs> Use that that same um, New World card. Giraffe, she had a blowback card, which allowed her to choose who went to the New World. She didn't want the Romans to go there because they don't score on going to the new world or anything like that. Uh, so she kind of did two birds, one stone. She did the blowback, which allowed her to change the, the target. She chose to move the Portuguese instead. So the Portuguese were breathing right uh, right on the Spanish's neck here. She's uh, drafts pretty much keeping the Spanish intact, partially because she's busy. <laughs> she doesn't want to waste the, or use the act, action yet to discard them, but partially to kind of to form a barrier between the Portuguese, who had a sizable stack there, and the Romans. Um, she's now able to move the Portuguese uh, to the to the New World, which is good for Flush, but uh, was helpful to Giraffe to get her out of there. So, uh, to get him out of there. Another thing uh, Runt did was she put a Jihad here. I couldn't find the, the Jihad marker. It's somewhere, but... Um, so, she's using this Islam marker instead. So what that means is any of the Islamic empires, which are the Egyptians and I guess the Ottomans as well, can't do anything but maneuver until this is controlled by an Islamic empire. So that should be interesting. I think she's hoping that's going to uh, cause Melky to focus his attention on beating up Giraffe. If she can get those two to fight, that's going to let her deal with her own thing. However, that does kind of step on the Egyptian the Pharaonic Egyptians' toes, because they're not going to be able to do a whole lot uh, other than maneuver. But they don't really need to do that much either. Um, still nice for her to be able to use the civilized. They, they've they built up quite a lot of um, culture power. But nice civilized action for Flush's Portuguese. Uh, he got this leader, Dar Darija de Grebski. She comes with two other people, so she's got three... He, that, that let him park three guys there right next to this... Um, this labyrinth, which which could get him some more points. He he moved up 
in the labyrinth last turn, his Japanese, he has um, a couple guys, Davy Crockett didn't do so well um, during the maneuver phase. He also had a rare conjunction, which led him to a production action right afterwards, which was nice because he could reinforce some of these guys in the new world. Um, so pretty fun for him. And here is the score for the round after it's all said and done. And if it looks stagnant to you, that's because it was. Um, our cowboy, and I actually haven't done this yet, played this card, Glory Pour Moi. Uh, and he played it on his, um, his, his Phoenicians, so they were the only ones who were able to score. There actually is someone out here who could have stopped him from doing that, but that person opted not to because they had their own reasons for that. Um, so that, that, that's gonna, I mean, that, any chances Flush had, that's really gonna hold him back. He would have been scoring hugely this turn. He got more wheat for the Japanese. The Portuguese were going to, to have the, the lead for being out, outside of Europe. Uh, so extra points for that. And yeah, so that helps Cowboy out a, a good bit. Um, also holds back Melky because Melky wasn't able to score. No one was able to score except for Cowboy, which has actually made things a lot easier for me. A lot less computation. Um, but that won't hold for next time. Uh, next time there's going to be some computation on the real people. Multi-game solitaire management. Seven by seven ages.